the Live Podcast. Sean Foyt here. I am actually inside of the Rhode Island State Capitol in Providence. I'm in an incredible senator's office that let me use this space. And I have on here right now one of my great friends, Senator Shannon Grove. Shannon, where, where are you right now? Are you in your office? No, I'm at home. Uh, we adjourned the okay. session yesterday at noon, and so now okay. I'm just at home. Well, listen, we got a lot to cover. And so first, I want to say this. Thank you for coming on here. Thank you so much for being such an incredible support, Shannon. I, not only just in my congressional run, but throughout Let Us Worship, you have just been one of the most incredible uh, uh, encouragers to me personally. Uh, you've been a freedom fighter. And everybody that's on here that's listening to this across America, I really want you to follow Shannon. I want you to pray for her. I want to highlight everything that she's doing. She loves the Lord. She loves America. And she's fighting in California. And we're so grateful for you, Shannon. I just want to say that. We're so grateful for you. We would not be uh, doing what we're doing today had it not been for your support. So I just want to just thank you, thank you, thank you for, for who you've been and how strong you've been in my life and my family. You're awesome. You're so awesome, dude. When you came to me with that whole thing, what a crazy thing in the middle of COVID to have a, a Let Us Worship <laughs> event at the state capitol and the capitol kids. Remember the CP was coming up to us going, Miss Grove, they're not social distancing. Miss Grove, Miss Grove. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was oh, so crazy. So awesome. we, yeah. we, we had a, uh, Shannon helped us get a permit. We had almost over 10,000 people that showed up at the height of COVID in, in Sacramento. And it was just one of the wildest moments of you know, of our of our lives and so we're we're so grateful hey i want to i want to move forward to um to to what you're doing right now uh this bill we've all seen it sb14 uh it became national news everybody across america knows about this for those that don't this was a bill that you wrote that actually passed the senate and it was a bill to uh, uh, to classify those that traffic minors with, uh, as those with, they would get a felony, I guess, if they were caught. Um, can you explain a little bit more about that for us? Yes. So it's very narrowly focused. If okay. If you're a person that sells a child for sex and you get arrested and you get convicted right. and go to prison, because we're in California, Sean. Okay. So yes. just remind people of that. You go to prison for convicted for conviction of selling a child for sex. You can get sentenced to four, eight, and twelve years. Let's just take okay. the maximum twelve years. But under California law, that trafficker can get on the streets in less than four years. Okay, so okay. You have good time credits. Then you get out and you're a good model citizen. You go about your business. You know, get saved, run a worship team, whatever. Right. Then my bill doesn't affect you. If you get out and sell children for sex again and you get caught again, you will get a strike on your second offense. We're in California. And they voted that down because they did not want a strikeable offense in, in this in this arena. They don't like this three wow. strikes law. This this bill wow. is for selling children for sex, serious felonies, to make it a serious felony. And address the issue that these are repeat offenders that we are trying desperately to keep off the streets and keep our children right. safe. Right. And so here you have, it's almost like, I mean, I want to talk about several different areas of this. Number one, you know, it, we're in a moment right now because of the movie that's come out, you know, The Sound of Freedom. Because of, it's like God is highlighting right now. He's, there's a massive exposing that's happening. And I, I prophesied this in the beginning of the year. This is going to be a year of exposing and we need it. Praise okay. God. Um, there's a massive exposing of this, of this human trafficking, this darkness and this demonic uh, thing that's been happening across America and the world. And, you know, we have a ministry called Light of Canada where we've rescued to date almost 1200 kids out of India, out of the sex trade in India and human trafficking trade. And it's been phenomenal. And by the way, if you want to be a part of that, you can go to lightacandle.global. You can sponsor a kid. We have, a, I think, 100 kids that are up for sponsorship. Uh, it's a powerful program, maybe the most powerful thing that we do in ministry. However, so this film comes out. Uh, Hollywood despises it. Politicians react against it. They say it's QAnon. 
It's like it, we're starting to see the unraveling of this network that includes Hollywood, includes politicians, and includes – and people are in bed with this human trafficking and the sexual exploitation of children. You at the right time, this bill came forward. And the movie comes out. I mean even today, I think Ashton Kutcher, the actor, is before Congress testifying about human trafficking, right? So there's people fighting it. How in the world did this thing get denied? I mean, it was I dumbfounding to people. It is really dumbfounded. And it was even dumbfounded to the governor why they would get it. I mean, Gavin Newsom was even dumbfounded. So like I said, this yeah. is a nonpartisan, it's a bipartisan bill. We have 50 plus co-authors. It got out of the Senate on 40 votes. Scott Wiener in San Francisco voted for this bill to lock up human traffickers of children. Okay. And then it gets to the Public Safety Committee under Reggie Jones Sawyer in Los Angeles. And he's like, yeah, no, it's not happening. And uh, he felt like he didn't get informed. He felt like he didn't have the right information. But he had all the information. And uh, he made a decision to kill it. And then, of course, they don't roll the chair. as like They don't vote against the chair. It's very difficult to do that. So everybody followed suit on the chair. And then, again, just the curtain just... Like you said, the prophetic word of exposing, just the curtain was opened. Ashley yeah. Zavala was the hero, Aton Wallace. They just exploded this media firestorm. Uh, you know, it went from California to the White House to across the pond to England and around the world and back in right. a less than 24 hour period. And like I said earlier, somebody goes, How's that happen? I go, Man, only my Jesus could do something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Um, and, and the next thing, you know, my phone was exploding. The governor was on board. The speaker was on board and they called, uh, they suspended the rules, did an emergency hearing and heard the bill again. And the same people that voted it down on Tuesday, uh, got it out of committee and became co-authors of this bill on wow. Thursday. Wow. In Cal like in California. In California. In ca Keep saying well, I know. California. <laughs> I, I know. And I love that. Now, that's what I'm saying. I mean, if God can do it in California, it's like, I mean, I, like I'm sitting here, as I mentioned in the beginning, in the office of a senator in Rhode Island that's saying what happened in California, we got to have that happen here. So what imagine happened? like. So goes California, so goes the nation, right? Exactly. Exactly. And that's what I'm that's saying. Fire. It's like, it's like we've, this is why we need this story to go viral because. We've seen enough of, of the horrific things that have set trends around the world from California. But now this is a ray of hope. This is a prophetic promise. This is you taking a stand in a, super, a state with a supermajority, and you're able to get this thing through and get massive exposure behind it. I was uh, – when this happened, Shannon, and I heard that the bills that – that they voted against it, you know, we mobilized our prayer network. We – I did a mass text to 200,000 people. We sent emails out to, you know, networks all around the world. And the thing that I said is we just got to pray. Like we need breakthrough in this. Like we got to have the intercession. Tell people that are listening, what, what is that X factor like? I mean, as a politician, you're facing these issues. What, how does prayer work in these scenarios? Oh, in this particular scenario, Media wants to talk to you. We pray. We do the interview. We prayed after. We thank God. We pray. They want to talk to you about, you know, meeting with the governors, the, you know, just everything that happened that day. We just prayed consistently. Now, that's just how our office operates. Right. I still have that lion above my couch when you walk in the door and it's yeah. grabbing that California flag. It's a lion of tribe of Judah. Yeah. And it's like, she's mine right. because I believe that the state of California belongs to the Lord. So we pray. I'm surrounded by believers in my office. We pray right. consistently in my office. We share scripture in our office. And um, it's funny, one thing, I, and, the, and you could see that God's hand was on this whole thing. You could see it. Right. It was just like plain as day. Like you could, it was right. really beautiful. And right. um, one time it was a very serious moment in the whole 48 hour cycle that took place. And we were challenged with something that was very significant. And we said, no. And they said, it's going to die. And we're like, okay, you can let that millstone hang around your neck because I believe the people are with us and we're not going right. to let you bargain down a second offense. Right. You know, we're not gonna yeah. let you do that. And we said no. And then, um, okay, you made your decision. And they walked over and they were going to vote on the bill. And um, I think it was Lindsay said, uh, we are clothed in dignity and righteousness. And we laugh without fear of the future. And we just started laughing. Like, I don't want to say laughing in their face, but we just started laughing like a giggle right. in the middle I of love a crowded room. I love that. 
And then I think we looked up at them and they were like looking at us like, wow, we didn't like they didn't scare it. I don't know how to explain it. It was just right. at the right time. It was God's time at the right time, the right moment yeah. that just came up and bam, it was over. And and then they gaveled down. They called the roll. It was I, I, I not voting. I not voting. I and we got six votes and we were out. Wow. Yeah. Well, I love that. I love that whole idea. I, I think that that's so cool for people to hear like. That Psalm 2 reality, which I feel like is very applicable to the season we're living in, and especially in America, you know, where it's like, you know, that that the, 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 the forces of darkness raging against the Lord, raging against the church, raging against his people. And and you see, you know, let us throw off their fetters, let us throw off their shackles. It, you know, it's like the powers and principalities, right? And then in Psalm chapter 2, you look at the position of the Lord in that moment, and he says, he who sits on the heavens laughs. So there's something about that joy that's accessible in the midst of this crazy culture war and polarization and all this kind of stuff that we're in. How does that joy, how do you use that joy in your life? I mean, you're in California. A lot of people don't have hope. You know, uh, we're in New England this weekend, another region of America that's very blue, you know. Again, revival history, first and second great awakenings, Charles, we John Wesley, Charles Wesley, George Whitfield, I mean, incredible history and heritage of revival, but yet I'm in a town right now, Shannon, where 40% of Brown University now identifies as LGBTQ. Wow. And they're one of the biggest, I mean, this is, this was a Bible school. Like the, these Ivy League schools were Bible schools, right? And so you see this, this mockery, this perversion, this intensity how do you keep joy in the midst of that in this season? And what's your message to other believers? Well, so number one, God's always in control. And we know how the story ends. Number two, God loves everybody. He doesn't love a transgender kid less than he loves me. We don't have to agree with Amen. ideology that's going on. And we have to stand up and righteously fight against these things. We do. Right. And sometimes when we feel defeated, you just have to stand. Um, my friend Rob McCoy uh, you know him. And, um, yeah. he, I was so bummed one day I started crying and I called him and I'm bawling on the phone and he goes, you listen to me, you buck up. Kind of like when you do, when you call me, you text me like, Oh, and I'm like, dude, the devil gets mad and says, Oh shit. He's awake. When you wake up in the morning, put yeah. your feet on the floor, right? Don't quit whining yeah. and get up and go do what you're supposed to do. So Rob McCoy kind of gave me that same thing. He's like, um, he just says, look, it's not about the victory. It's about the obedience. You let yeah. God worry about the victory. And then I thought, you know yeah. what? I need to stop, you know, moaning in my losses and just go, man, I was obedient today and I'm going to watch. Yeah. And so, wow. um, it, and I, like I said, I'm surrounded by incredible people. I have favor, you know, people, have, I get asked all the time, How, how'd you get the governor to go against his own party and support this bill? You know, it, yeah. it's favor. It's it, That's all it is. It's favor. Yeah, I, I, I've, I, it is, it is favor. And I think it's also, I think it's also courage and I think it's also boldness. And I think that, you know, one of the big reasons why I wanted to, to, to take this moment to highlight you and what you're doing is I want people out there to have hope. Like, like they gotta, they gotta understand that God has his people in these polit, in the political realm across America, in these cities, in these states, in these, you know, Capitol buildings, you're, you're not just a, a state senator, you're a revivalist, you're an intercessor, you're a worshiper, you know, and, and when you walk into these buildings, you're carrying the presence of God and you're carrying a spirit of breakthrough. And, you know, you, Sh Senator Shannon Groves plus God equals a majority. <laughs> you know, you may be in the minority party, it may be a super majority, super blue, crazy, you know, uh, 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 legislators around you, but you plus God equals a majority. You already outweigh everybody else the moment you walk into the room. Praise and God, people gotta people gotta see that across America. You know, I mean we gotta we gotta have hope and believe that God can flip the script. Um what is your okay, you take this victory, you take the exposing, wh where do you go from here as you move forward? How do you take this victory and 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 celebrate it and thank God for it and then move on into what you guys got coming this year politically. So, um, you know, like taking it to the Assembly Appropriations Committee, this specific bill, we have to get it out of yeah. appropriations onto the assembly floor into the governor's okay. desk and have a, okay. you know, a real victory. 
And again, Psalms 4, 20 verses 4 says, you know, I'll remember your, he'll remember our sacrifices, give us the desires of our heart and let all our plans succeed. And at the end, we'll give him glory and honor for the whole thing. So that's been our mantra, our, our thing is, uh -huh. is that, you know, you can't ever unsee this nasty stuff that yeah. we've seen. I have yeah. a parent that testified that she found out her daughter was initiated into human trafficking when she got a ding on her phone, clicked on the video, and it was five men raping her daughter. I have a, a survivor that has a physical cattle brand on her chest and on her side and on her legs. They burned her with a, a, a real cattle brand, like a metal cattle brand, not a tattoo. I have a, a survivor, Des Perkins, that um, talked about you know grown men of all color and all sizes, sweaty grown men all over her at seven years old. I have a survivor that was lured at a, a, a Vanguard University on a volleyball scholarship household, Christian household, lured out of somebody that she thought loved her. She went to Vegas. Hey, babe, let's go to Vegas. She thought she was in love. She went to Vegas, knock on the door, money exchanged. They came in and raped her first time she was sold by the person that she thought that loved her. There's a lot of different ways that women get involved in this wow. trafficking. So I can tell you that it's so important wow. that we get this bill for those survivors and those that are on this road and still on the street um, to get them, you know, some type of protections. Figueroa Street in Los Angeles, 70% of the women there are in shelters that are black. 50% of the people on the street, young kids on the street there are black and brown. Um, we want their perpetrators to go to jail for selling them for yeah. sex. That's this whole bill. Wow. Get it out of appropriations. Get it to the governor's desk as is, no amendments. Have the governor sign it. We'll do a celebration. Give God the praise, honor, and glory. My staff has been incredible. Prayer warriors interceding on our behalf. We'll be in the middle of a, of a battle where we feel like we have to make a decision. Bam, phone goes off. Stand strong, only stand. We'll be in the middle of a battle. Um, listen with both ears. We'll be in the middle of a battle. Something happens and and we just, we instantly stop negotiating with whoever we're talking to and look at our phone to see what's happening because wow. no one knows but God what's happening in that room, right? Wow. And so we've been really reliant on that. And wow. it's been an interesting journey for me. But over the last, since 2010, I've been in the building. I think that God has given me a uh, favor with relationships with both, yeah. you know, both sides of the aisle um, right. because I love them. I don't agree with all the things that they do, but right. I know that God loves them just as much as yeah. he loves me. Um, yeah. And I've tried to, to model that. Um, after this bill, um, hopefully I'm going to sleep for a week. <laughs> um, I'm very, very tired. I really am very, very tired. So hopefully I'm going to get some rest and, um, and then we'll just, you know, we'll say, okay, God, what's next? <laughs> Yeah. Just like you do. Do you have a plan yeah. of where you're going tomorrow? You're just, God can say, hey, go to Texas. And you're like, okay. <laughs> Who knows? Wow, that's, that's, that's incredible. I mean, it's, it, I do feel like God has uniquely positioned you. And I mean, I, you know, again, referencing the fact that I'm in another state capital right now and that senator in this state capital is, is moved by your story and your testimony and the ripple effects already that are going to happen across America in different capital cities um, in the legislation that's going to mimic what you released and what you fought for. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of people out there that have either seen the movie sound of freedom or they all of a sudden stepped into this awareness. Those stories you're saying are horrifying. Uh, what's your encouragement for people out there? How do they get involved? How do they fight back? How do they stand? How do they, what can they do to get involved beyond just watching a movie or listening to this podcast? So you can follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram and social media is at Shannon Grove CA. So it's just Shannon Grove CA, no spaces. Mm -hmm. And we do updates. So we posted, um, you know, telephone office numbers for everybody on the public safety committee. When we post it, yeah. make those phone calls. I support this bill. Right. Vote for this bill. I, I you know. Right. Um, we're going to do the same thing on appropriations. You can engage in that way. You can engage by sharing your story on our page. We have hundreds of survivors, um, or I think we're almost up to thousands of survivors that are sharing their story. Um, I had a lady um, show up at the uh, at the hearing that happened on Thursday. I mean, it got set Thursday morning and happened 20 minutes later, and she just came down from where she was at. And she stood quietly in the background and I just saw her, you know, and I walked up and I said hi to her and she goes, I want to thank you. I'm a human trafficking survivor. And I go, go tell this media 
what this means wow. to you. And she gave a heartfelt testimony about how incredibly encouraged she was that they said yes to locking up the people who damaged her life and only God could have restored. So, wow. I mean, so get involved and get engaged. Um, there's yeah. organizations like Empowerment, like your organization, like that yeah. are rescuing these children out of human yeah. trafficking. There's, uh, if you're a, a social worker, volunteer wraparound services at like a cash, right. a coalition against human trafficking, a, a, a women's shelter. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of multifaceted ways that you could get involved in this particular industry. Number one, pray because right. prayer intercedes and goes before and then release the worshipers, pray, release the worshipers and then stand up and take action. That's it. Right. Come on. I love that. I love that so much. I, I want to have you actually pray. I, I want to pray over you, but then I want to have you before we end here, pray over everybody else, because I, I do feel like, like, you know, I, I I always reference that Billy Graham, uh, you know, uh, that, that statement where he says, when a brave man or woman takes a stand, the spines of everyone else are stiffened. And I think that when you've gone through a battle, like what you just went through, and you come out the other side victorious and you see what God's done, it, man, it encourages everybody else. It's like a, like a brave heart moment. It's like, let's, let's take it. Let's, let's, Let's 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 be the kingdom. Let's be the light. Let's 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 bring this. And if it can happen in California, this should be happening in every other state. That's always what I say when we go to these capital cities. I'm like, listen, this is what God's doing in California. Okay, if you can take the craziest state and begin to ignite a revival and a movement and and, and boldness and courage, He can do it here. You know, uh, these states across New England are nothing. You know, for God. So. I want to pray for you though, Lord. I thank you for for my friend, God, Shannon Groves. I thank you for this battle and this fight. I thank you, Lord, that you raised her up for such a time as this. She is an Esther. She's carrying that spirit, Lord, that Esther spirit to bring deliverance to an entire group of people, God, that have been neglected and have been forgotten. And I thank you, Lord, you're raising her up, God, with an anointing on her life, God. We just pray. As everybody on this podcast that's listening, we just pray over her, over her life, over her family. We just pray continued favor, continued blessing. Lord, open doors that no man can shut and shut doors that no man can open. Give her that key of David. That's that Isaiah twenty two twenty two anointing God to open doors and shut doors. And Lord, we thank you that she is shutting this door on human trafficking in California. We pray that many more doors would be shut. And many more doors would be open from the calling and the anointing on our life. Give her rest. Give her breakthrough. Let this be a season, God, where you just come to her family and her home and bring peace. And 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 just like you, you had angels minister, God, to many throughout the Bible. Send angels to minister over her in this time of refreshing. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. All right, now you pray over people. Now you pray over our, our listeners. They're going to love this. No, Father God, I just lift up Sean Foyt right now. And Father God, I just want you to continue to anoint every step that he takes. Father God, even with discouragement, his family was attacked. I remember one time, Lord Jesus, and every challenge that this man faces, he always rises above. Father God, you've given him an amazing platform to get messages out about what you're doing in the state of California and across this nation. And he uses that, Father God, to bring you glory and honor. So, Father God, I ask that every person in the sound of my voice that hears this podcast, that you would anoint them and give them wisdom, yes. Father God. If they're called yes. into politics, Father God, tell them to be bold and courageous and put their name on a ballot. Yes. If they're called to walk precincts, Father God, give them good walking shoes. If they are called, Father God, to make phone calls or called, Father God, to engage in the political process to get good, effective legislation passed, Lord Jesus, that will bring glory and honor to you, Father God, then place them in that specific a room or authority or, or give them that direction on what to do. Father God, lay on the hearts. You knew, Lord Jesus, when you, you knew, Father God, when you established this earth, how many doctors, lawyers, yeah. worship leaders, how many people we would need in different industry. And you've given everybody a calling on their heart to fulfill that industry, Lord Jesus. We need to operate in the every avenue of faith, Father God, and we need to every avenue of influence. And I just lift up every listener right now, Father God, and call them forth to be bold and courageous. And those that, Father God, that say, oh, I could never do that. Let them know, Lord Jesus, that they could do anything if they stand with you. Amen. Anything, Come on. Anything at all. I, Father God, am a perfect example of that. High school dropout, didn't go to college, and I'm one of 40 in the state of California because my God placed me there. 
Come on. I thank you, Father God, for letting me be a warrior for you. And I call forth other warriors, Father God, other warriors that say, I'm not worthy. I'm not that. But with you, Lord Jesus, you are our strength. You are the one that calls us, Lord Jesus. And if you call us, you will provide for us. And I thank you, Father God, for that. And I pray, precious Jesus, that everyone in the sound of my voice, the things you've laid on their heart, that you manifest that in their life, Father God, and call them out fully to their purpose in your precious name. Amen. 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 I love you, my friend. Good to see you. you.